Before we start this review, I have to point out a thing. Yooka-Laylee advertised itself as a spiritual successor to Banjo-Kazooie. With that in mind, the story starts with our protagonists, Yooka and Laylee, enjoying their newly built home. Previously, Laylee found a magical book which is being taken away by this game's antagonist, Capital B. Unfortunately, the pages from that book scatter all over the world. This game is painfully littered with dialogues that constantly break the fourth wall and make unfunny references. This is a huge problem, because the game just simply fails in building a world. Yooka Laylee just goes completely overboard, to the point of the writing often falling flat. And even after finishing it, I can't say I have any interest in this world or its characters. That is also thanks to the annoyingly abrupt ending and a... We've already told you like 15 times, but there will be a sequel. Cliffhanger. Before you ask, no, the credits are as bland as you can get. However, it's a 3D platformer and the story is just an excuse to get our heroes going anyway, so let's dive into the gameplay. This game is an old school collectathon with a very strong resemblance to the Banjo series. The main goal of the game is to get enough pages to progress to the next world and in the end to the final boss capital B himself. To do that you need to explore the five book worlds and the overworld which is like a big level in of itself. In order to continue your adventure you have to find pages to unlock and expand the book worlds. You also have to collect quilts that allow you to buy new moves from trousers. In addition to that you can find stuff like molecules that allow you to transform. Arcade coins to play Rex Store's minigames, health upgrades and energy upgrades. Wait, energy? Yes, there is an energy meter for your special moves in this game that decreases the longer or the more often you use some abilities. It also takes f***ing 15 seconds to recharge! You can double jump and unlock moves like eating fruit to shoot projectiles or rolling fast. In each world, Trouser waits SOMEWHERE to sell you a number of 1 to 3 moves per level, though good luck figuring out what these do before buying them. The levels themselves are huge and there are a lot of things to discover and to collect. Finally, you can equip tonics which give you different perks, though some of them are useless. Listen, doesn't a lot of this sound and look familiar? Gargantuan levels with perhaps too many collectibles? transformations in each world, pages in early worlds that are only unlocked by endgame moves, a hub world that is too large for its own sake, too many quizzes in the game. All of this doesn't really sound like Banjo-Kazooie. It sounds much more like f***ing Banjo-Tooie! yooka Laylee feels like a modern predecessor to Banjo-Tooie, a game that wasn't bad but the level design remains one of the most criticized aspects of that game for good reason. The general lack of visual indicators doesn't help either. So we have levels that are even bigger, littered with endless walkways that have no purpose, confusing level design, enemies that basically have no point in being in this game, inconsistencies in gameplay with what you're supposed to be able to do, and too many moments of blue balling the player. No seriously, that is an issue. You finally find something in this surprisingly empty world and then you can get that pagey because you're missing a move from world 4. Just like Banjo-Tooie, you can never finish a world upon first entering it. Unlike Banjo-Tooie however, you have no option for fast travel, which drags out the game even longer. Yooka Laylee suffers from a severe case of time padding, with an energy meter that never had a point in being in this game to begin with, and very situational, temporary elemental upgrades and you can't help but wonder why these weren't just normal upgrades to your moveset, with a simple ammunition limitation. Because, and pay attention here, that was a major aspect in filling the levels of both Banjo-Kazooie and Banjo-Tooie. Ah, uh, so I finally got to the final boss door. I got about 40 pages I think, so let's see if I can do... 
So I went back to each world, made every level even bigger if they weren't already. I've played and beaten every minigame, boss battle and minecart section in the game. Then I finally stood in front of the final boss door. <laughs> It doesn't consist of one, not two, not three, but four phases. No health pickups either. The first phase isn't too bad, but you have to deal with cheap shots and it just taking a long time. The second phase takes way too much time for my liking, though you can influence that by stun locking the final boss. Though in general, this is just a tedious phase. The third phase is challenging, but not unfair, unless the game decides to screw with you. The fourth phase is terrible. Here is where the energy meter makes this boss a textbook example of bad artificial limitations. The only comfortable way I found to do this was with a tonic that reduced the energy recharge time to 5 seconds. But even then you have to deal with shit like accidentally touching the invisible wall due to the shitty camera perspective. Yooka Embark on an epic adventure to collect all the pages. Transform into many wild things like... The flower... And... What the fuck? This game has bugs and glitches which lead to death. Though that only matters because sometimes you have to run all the way back. Does it sound like I hate the game? If so, that isn't the case. Believe it or not, but I think the worst experience this game has to offer is the fourth minecart minigame. But I sat down quite a few hours to gather everything and once I had all the moves in the game, the level design, while still way too large for its own sake, became less of a problem thanks to flying. Which kinda breaks this game in half. The second half of my playthrough was spent mostly... feeling nothing. There were a few things that made me feel frustrated, but there was nothing worse than the Capital Casino minecart level. I also had moments when I had a genuine smile on my face. Don't get me wrong, most minigames and all of the minecart sections are just outright bugged out or bad in general. You are literally cooked alive! You begged me to rescue you a second ago! You gave me the page without me even doing the right favor for you, just what? The music of this game is fantastic, but sometimes a little bit forgettable. And one of the songs had a section that was just loud and noisy. The sounds the characters make are sometimes so ear grating that I recommend you to activate short speech in the options. Ah, stop! <laughs> Visually, the game looks absolutely gorgeous, but you often have to fight with the camera, which might lead to another unfair death. In the end, Yoga Lely doesn't leave me with anything. The issues in the level design could at least be improved by either making it possible to buy all moves from the very beginning, which would make the game more intuitive, or just remove it in the first place and give the player all abilities when they start off, because your level design was made with all upgrades in mind. yooka feels imaginative, but also like it had no clear vision of what it wanted to be, and it suffered because of it. Did you like Banjo Tooie? Then you might like this game. I can see people enjoying this game for many good reasons. I think the last level is a lot of fun, but even in its best moments, Yooka Laylee is mediocre due to its focus to be too large, and nostalgia can't overshadow this game's flaws. <laughs>